I am finally sitting down to film um, my most requested uh, bags I have sold and why. However, I'm actually going to do this a little bit differently and I'm actually going to speak um, based on brands. So this video is going to be about Chanel. The next video will be about Hermes. And then the video after that will be all the other brands, Louis Vuitton, Dior, Celine, that sort of thing. Before I dive into today's video, if you are new to my channel and you aren't subscribed, I would love if you would hit the subscribe button below and also the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. I upload videos every weekend and then I might have a midweek upload. So like I said, this video is going to be about Chanel and I'm not, it's not going to be like in order of like it's not going to be in a complete order, that's for sure. I'm definitely going to have bags all over the place a little bit in terms of like the timeline of when I sold it. But I'm going to try and stick to somewhat of an order based on memory from the bags that I sold the longest time ago to the bags that I've sold more recently. And the ones that I sold more recently are probably going to be the ones that are not going to be in very specific order. They're just going to be the ones that I sold recently. Um, I'm pro There's probably going to be bags that I'm going to miss. And I think... The ones that I bought, like, how old am I now? <laughs> uh, like 19 years ago um, or 18 years ago. Any Chanel that I bought back there is going to be a very vague, vague memory. Because back in the day when I was like 15, 16 years old and I was working, saving money for, you know, for a car. Um, I was also saving money for a handbag. Um, yeah, I bought vintage Chanel, like vintage pre-loved Chanel from Japan so that way I didn't have to spend too much on it um so those are the bags that I'm not really going to fully remember but there is one in specific that I remember that I bought and I think I was around about like 17 at the time or 18 and it was the Chanel triple Coco shoulder bag so this is the shoulder bag that had the three cc's on it in gold the 24 karat gold plated hardware it was a caviar shoulder bag. Um, I think it was the one that, I can't remember if it was the, the one I had was the one with the drawstring or the one that I had that was just the shoulder bag and it was like a tote bag. I can't really remember. Particular bag. Um, I don't even know why I sold it, but I regret selling it. That's for sure. I actually wish that I had kept it because now I've been wanting to repurchase it and it's just like in the thousands. Whereas like I paid like 900 bucks for it, something like that. But now it's like two, three thousand dollars four thousand Australian dollars um so yeah I paid a lot less for it but I think I reason I sold it at the time was because I was more into Louis Vuitton and not really into Chanel I think that yeah that's right actually I remember with Chanel I kind of associate it with more like an old lady kind of brand oh my god <laughs> it says the one that's got Hermes bags this was my mindset when I was like a teenager early 20 like not even my early 20s this is my mindset pre 20 years old my mindset was that Chanel was like an old lady brand so I really I think I really was buying it more for the fact that it was branded and it was like seen as like a very esteemed brand like back then I didn't even know Hermes right I didn't even know Hermes back then but yeah I think that was one of the reasons I sold it is that I was just more into Louis Vuitton so I sold it to like fund a Louis Vuitton bag I'm certain that's what it was but it was the Chanel Cambon line now this line I loved this was more sporty, youthful. This was like the whole um, Nicole Richie Paris Hilton era. So this was in the 2000s. Where this, I'm sure that this line was around then because they were carrying these handbags. So the Cambon line, I owned a couple of bags from that line and I owned like a wallet. Um, yeah, I owned them because they were more youthful. And when the Cambon line came out or Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton made it alive, um, and publicized it. I don't know if it was already out or whatnot. I don't know timelines. That was a line that more resonated with me. The reasons that I sold those was more to do with the fact that they were so in your face Chanel logo. Like they were like CC really bold and like loud that I just kind of felt like it was a bit too much. But anyways, yeah, those are the older Chanel bags that I used to own. Um, and the reason that I sold it, that's probably not very helpful at all. So let's move on to the bags that are more known now. Like they're not vintage discontinued lines. These are all going to be handbags that mm, you can somewhat pretty much buy now. Um, some of them are classics or some of them might be like seasonal, but they're not all too old in terms of being seasonal. Because it was only in the past, say, I think around maybe the past eight years that I really started to like buy Chanel again. I think I had a period of time where... For, actually, yeah, I did. I, I was even just discussing this with my husband just today that there was a period of time in my 20s between like 21 and about 
24 where I was not buying really not buying much luxury maybe just a little bit of Louis Vuitton like but pre-loved because obviously we were saving to buy a house like duh, priorities right so yeah there was a period of time where I really was only like hardly bought anything luxury and then it was again once we had actually bought the house um and I already had a good paying job and anything but like that yeah anyways I digress but yeah it was like 24 onwards that I started to actually buy Chanel and then I even learnt about Hermes and other brands I started to get into other brands around there so the first bag that I bought was the Chanel Gabriel bag which is not a good bag to be the first bag that you actually buy from the actual store like starting your Chanel shopping experience again because before that I just bought everything Chanel pre-loved uh, from Japan so yeah I bought the Chanel Gabriel in the mermaid purple iridescent and the reason that I bought it was because I had missed out on the cruise purple iridescent with the rainbow slick hardware which I think was 17c if I remember and I was like I'm not gonna miss out on this again um I'm gonna get it because it's gonna be a hot bag it's a unicorn I love it it's so cool looking about four and a half thousand dollars Australian when I bought that and then so I took it home tried to style it on a couple occasions when we were going out and it was like I just couldn't integrate it because I just did not even know how to really work with color so um, I think it was around about like 10 days later that I realized that perhaps this is not the right bag for me um, also I was a bit worried about the base potentially scratching because the Gabriel has a really hard base so I decided to take it back to the store and um, exchange it for something else. I ended up exchanging it to the Chanel Trendy bag and I had to add on money because I think then the Chanel Trendy was uh, $6,000. So I ended up having to add on one and a half thousand, like something like that, right? And I got it in like, um, it was called Beige Claire, but it wasn't Beige Claire. It was like a salmon pink. That was not a Beige Claire. Like that's the problem with Chanel is that they name their bags, like, the, like they name the colors the same but the codes are different. In the store, it looked like it was a beige. In the store, it looked like it was like a beige on like that slightly pink side. And that's cool because I love pinks, but I like neutralish pinks. And I guess it still was. It was still a neutralish pink. That's no doubt about it. It was still a beautiful neutralish pink. But when I got home, <laughs> when I got home and unboxed it, I was like, hang on. In the store, it looked more beigey neutral. Here, it looks like a coral salmon pink. Like, oh, and I was like, oh, it's not even what I thought it was. Like the store lighting looks totally, made it look totally different. And once you do an exchange, you can't do any more exchanges. It's one exchange only and that's it. One done, dusted, too bad, tough shit. So uh, already from that point, I was like, oh, that's not exactly the color I thought it was going to be. But I do like it and I'll make it work. When you already were not expecting something, you're already kind of slightly tainted in the purchase. Just like if you buy a pre-loved bag and there is like a flaw that you weren't expecting, you're like, what? And it's kind of like you can't unsee it, right? And then it taints the purchase. And a lot of time, you know, you want to let it go or you may decide to just make your peace with it and live with it. So with this trendy, <laughs> I was never really quite able to make my peace with it. So yeah, lo and behold, I obviously ended up selling that. Back then the Chanel Trendy was a new bag to Chanel. It hadn't been cemented as a classic or decided to be a classic. Yeah, I ended up selling that bag for, for a big loss and it was actually in my worst purchases video that I spoke about it. So that's a really old video, but it's very popular. So I'm gonna link it down below because that has a lot more information too about my worst luxury purchases. Um, I haven't done an updated version, but I still think that's worth watching. So yeah, that was pretty much the reason that I sold that bag was because of the color. Now, I'm not going to talk about regrets anymore. I don't want to go down that road, but I think that that's kind of an obvious given uh, because of the pricing, because now Chanel has done so many price increases. The next bag um, that I ended up getting was the Chanel Gabriel backpack. Now, I ended up getting that because um, I felt that I needed backpack because I had already given birth to my daughter and I thought that a backpack could be very useful none and none of that sort of thing um, but what I found to be annoying about that handbag um, being a backpack was that the chain straps don't stay fixed in place so when you put it on you've got to actually align the straps to be even then put it on your back or align the straps to be even like when it's on you and kind of like pull them forward just to get them even and then, you know, as you would walk around and move around, it would kind of become uneven. Like it was a very annoying design of a backpack. 
So that was the reason I sold it, was that I just found the straps super duper duper annoying. The drawstring bag, um, so I kind of felt like if you didn't seal it up properly, maybe someone could get in or like someone could pickpocket in there because it's on your back. Like if you're in a crowded place with that kind of backpack, it is the least secure backpack. You will probably not know if someone's fiddling in there, especially if they've got like a little narrow hand. It is a really badly designed backpack in my opinion. I mean, I'm sure people own it and love it, but I just think it's a bad idea. I feel like it's an... It's a pickpocket, pickpocketing accident waiting to happen. I think that there are better backpacks that Chanel makes. I'm absolutely certain that I'm going to miss some Chanel handbags in the rest of this portion. I'm certain of it. I do remember that I did buy a Chanel Deauville before though, and I revealed it on my channel. And it was a Chanel Deauville, um, I don't know what size, the large size. It didn't have the top handle. It was just with the shoulder straps. And I ended up um, attaching like a pearl strap to it to make, like, make it like a top handle. And um, I'll put a picture on the screen. So if you are interested in that, I'll leave a link to the accessories down below. The reason I actually sold that bag was I ended up getting a bit of color transfer on it. Like I got, uh, a, it was like a pink from a Zara dress or something like that. And it lightly transferred on and I couldn't clean it off, but it was very faint. You could hardly see it. But then once it happened, I was like, this is not going to be good for me. Not going to be good. So now the rest of the Chanel bags are not going to be in any kind of particular order, I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't think so. But these are kind of going to, these are going to be bags that you're going to remember that I unboxed on my channel. That's for sure. Cause they're going to be like in the past couple of years. The Chanel Caramel 19 bag. This was such a coveted color, but Chanel ended up bringing it back a few more times and um, at the time I decided to sell it, it had already come back again and it was planned. I knew it was planned to come back again for a third time, but not everybody knew. I kind of decided to myself, it was not like a bag that I could say would be a forever bag. Um, it was nice to use. It fit a lot. Um, like it was different, I guess. It was the first Chanel 19 I ever owned. Um, and I had bought it from a, you know, a, from the store directly. So I had the receipt and everything. Um, but yeah, I kind of was like, I just don't think that this is going to be a forever bag for me. I just wasn't like, I didn't like it. I think most of these bags I've done reviews on or done unboxings on. I'm not going to link all the unboxings. I'll just link the ones that I've got done reviews on. But because I decided it wasn't going to be a forever bag and I was just like a bit like a meh about it after a while. I was like, yeah, it's kind of cool color, you know? Yeah, it's nice. This bag is it's cool. It's all right. But it wasn't totally making my heart sing. And I thought it's probably better to let it go now before this color becomes like this constant repeat where its uh, value will no longer be held because the Chanel 19 does not hold its value. Even though I suppose with the Chanel price increases, it does help you to recover your money because if you bought it a while back and then the price goes up like five times, that's how you recover your money. But this wasn't a case of that. It wasn't like the Chanel had 19 had even gone up. I think it had gone up only twice or once. I think it might have only gone up once in, from when I bought it. Um, it wasn't one of the bags that Chanel felt that they could continue to increase quite regularly. So that's why I just decided to let go of it because I, um, I figured it's not... I can't be certain it's going to be a forever bag. The color, I was only kind of wearing it... Um, like as a fall winter kind of color because it was such a warm, it was such a warm caramelly kind of color. Especially, I think it was also the sizing of the bag more so because it, it's a Chanel 19. It's already a slightly bigger looking bag. It's puffy. It's got like that pillow sort of vibe. So it just looked like a smushy, comfortable kind of fall winter bag. So knowing that, you know, the color was going to come back again and that I could actually recover my money if not make a slight profit on it because the price went up. I made that decision to just let it go for that very reason. I think, like I said, I'm not quite sure of the order, but we're going to run with this one next. Um, the next bag that I bought and then decided to sell a little bit later was the Chanel Medium Classic Flap in the 21S, which was that purpley pink tone. Such a beautiful color. Love that color. It, that was the first experience that I had with a Classic Flap Double Flap. And I didn't realize that the capacity on that was really small, even though it's a medium bag. I thought being a medium bag, capacity was gonna be pretty good, but it was small. Like I felt like it was smaller than the capacity of my Constance 18. So, or well, like I think at the time I had my Constance 18, I don't know, but I felt like the capacity was really small in that. And um, I felt that the word medium didn't really mean medium handbag in that instance. It was more like a small capacity handbag. So that was one of the big things that annoyed me was that the capacity wasn't great. But the main thing that really, the main thing that really annoyed me about that bag was actually the double flap 
and then closing the main flap. So the double flap, I found it really super annoying to be able to press the button to snap it closed, especially if we had it too full, you weren't able to close the bag. And then I decided, okay, well, I won't close the double flap. I'll just leave it. But then I noticed after doing that, it would leave an impression in the bag. So I was like, oh, I'm not okay with that. What if I keep doing this and it just leaves an impression in the caviar leather? So all these kind of aspects were kind of just like, you know what, I, I just think that this bag is not the, wasn't the best idea. Um, I never got to try it on in the shop. I'd never tried that bag on in the shop. That was actually purchased pre, it was from uh, someone else who was selling it. It was brand new, but they decided that to, they were going to get the small instead. Um, now, the time I bought that, Chanel actually then had a price increase after. So again, it was a kind of a case of, I'm not totally satisfied with this handbag. Um, doesn't make my heart sing. Obviously, if I kept it, it would have continued to appreciate in value, but I ultimately ended up selling it because I knew that I was going to get my money back for it, which is what I did. I did get my money back because the medium classic flap doesn't do as well as a small classic flap. I would buy a classic flap medium again, pre-loved with a double flap, if it was like a great deal, like, you know, $8,000 or something like that. I would buy one again because uh, I actually think that's a really cool bag to kind of have in the collection. I think that it's you know, it's a Chanel classic flap. It's something that I probably feel like, even though I'm not totally vibing with the classic flap and I have just been buying seasonal Chanel bags, I still do want one eventually. <laughs> eventually I will get one, but you can kind of tell that I'm not like super in love with it or really desire and want it because otherwise I would have just gone out and bought one pre-loved already and I still haven't. I still haven't done another classic flap reveal. So that's really saying a lot. Now let's move on to... Cocoa handles. Now I've had a few cocoa handles and um, I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to specifically talk for the reason that I sold my standard cocoa handles that were not iridescent. So I had a small cocoa handle in um, Rose Claire. It was a beautiful, gorgeous pink. That was what I would say is actually a genuine neutral pink. It was a competitor actually for the 21S lilac classic flap that I had. Like those colors were like neck and neck in terms of like favorites in, you know, in the social media world of luxury. It was in the small size. And then I had the cocoa handle in the mini size, which was from 20p, if I remember. And that was like a salmon beige. So it was actually a bit like my trendy that I used to have, but it was a little bit more on that beige side. So both of these bags, obviously, you know, I've sold them. I think that they kind of had similar reasons though for the reason that I sold them, but also some different reasons. So the small cocoa handle, um, even though I totally love that color and I wanted to keep it just for the color. Seriously, I wanted to keep it just for the color. But I think when you, when you see my cocoa handle review video, I say that I haven't even used that bag. And the reason that I feel like I hadn't really used it was um, because I had the Kelly 25. The, and the Kelly 28 as well at the time, actually. And I would rather use my Kelly bags than use the cocoa handle. And I felt that the cocoa handle was um, kind of in that same like realm of like being exclusively only a shoulder bag, unless you use like uh, the strap extender that I shown in that review video. It was always a conflict with the Kelly bags. And I would always just reach for the Kelly bag if I just wanted to wear a dressy shoulder bag. The cocoa handle in the small is not the kind of bag that I would take with me for like just sort of casual day use. I wore it cross body. I didn't quite like that it kind of like that handle would get in the way and more infos in the review video. So that was one of the big reasons that I ended up selling it was because it was always a competitor for the Kelly bags and the Kelly bags would always win in the terms of the setting that I would want to use the cocoa handle, which is more for like going out occasion. The mini cocoa handle on the other hand was actually the bag that I used a lot. I used it a lot. I used it um, going to theme parks. I used it um, going out and about running errands. I used it to go shopping because I could use a crossbody. So it was very carefree. The handle didn't get in the way. So the mini cocoa handle is the bag that I preferred of the two. But the problem, it fit all I needed, but it was annoying because of the compartments. The compartments in that bag were, because it was already a small bag, it was like, why did you need to divide it up? because it made it harder for me to get my stuff because my stuff was like sitting really tightly next to each other or sitting on top of each other. It was all squished in, even though I could fit everything I needed because I had a mini phone, it was like annoying to get your stuff out of, but it was still the kind of bag that I could, could use like going to a theme park, going out and you know, doing normal casual stuff. 
Um, because even though it would fit everything in, I kind of would only just need to make sure I grabbed my phone most of the time because the phone was what I would use to pay for and stuff like that. Also had an incident where I had color transfer over that bag as well. So it was kind of like, I think it was just a multitude of things. So I've actually forgotten that I actually almost forgot some bags. So my 21A gray top handle, top handle mini flat. The reason I sold that was because, gosh, I love that gray too. What happened with that was um, after a couple of uses, I noticed that it had like, I think it might have always already been like that with the bag, to be honest, because it was a matte finish, but it had like this kind of, like a murky kind of look to it. If you had oily hands and then you touched it, it was like it was leaving that kind of patina on the bag um, because it was such a matte bag. And I could kind of see it a little bit. It wasn't obvious, but I could kind of see that it might have already even had it before I got it. I'm not sure, I cannot remember. And that bothered me, because <laughs> once you see something, you can't unsee it. And again, I was also worried it was gonna get worse. Another bag that um, that was from 21B, so it was after 21A, and it was the, it was like a dusty, rosy pink. It was a beautiful neutral, but, and it was a mini flat, but it only came in silver hardware. And I ended up, Oh, I know why I got it actually. So what happened first was that I bought from this se that series from that season. I bought the 21B Dusty Rose Pearl Crush Wok. So it was the wok with the pearl crush, and it was in gold hardware, aged gold hardware. So it was perfect. It was exactly what I I like. I prefer gold hardware or aged gold. You know, light gold. Anything gold I prefer than silver, right? Um, but I noticed that with that wallet there was a popped stitch like it was popping out and it was in a spot it was a quite big popped stitch as well and it was in a kind of spot where I was like if this is gonna keep stretching and pulling and I'm putting my things in it might potentially unravel the rest of the stitches I contacted my sales associate and they said yeah you can send it back but I, like they don't refund you have to fight for a refund even if something's faulty like you have to fight for a refund and I also it also would mean that you would jeopardize your um, store relationship like they the sales associate probably won't want to deal with you anymore because you fought with a manager and fought above their head for a refund so I didn't want to go down that road um, and at the time I actually had another sales associate in a different state she advised me that yeah it's not a, it's not actually the like best thing if you continue to want to buy Chanel you want to have a good relationship with the sales associate I ended up saying I ended up deciding that um, I would just go ahead and um, um, get the mini flat version because I love the color but knowing that it was only knowing that it was only in silver hardware but I ended up instead of returning it to the store that I got it from I ended up sending it to um, the other sales associate I knew that was in a different state because she had the mini flat I changed it to the mini flat um, but I never I never you know like you see where I'm going I wanted gold I wanted the gold hardware and I never could get past the fact that it was in silver. I also should put into context that this time period of buying like these bags, the Chanel 19, the medium classic flap, this was all during the pandemic. So um, I wasn't even able to really use my bags. Like I could hardly use them because we were in and out of lockdowns all the time. So a lot of the bags, like they would just, I'd buy them and they just sit on the shelf. And then I would come to this epiphany that I was like, I know I haven't used it, but do I want to use it now? Like I got to that, you know what I'm kind of saying? Like I got to this, like, like I'd, each bag I'd have some kind of epiphany where like I haven't used it, but do I want to use it? Like I would get to that point and I would have to question myself whether or not I want to start using it and get the wear and tear on it, knowing very well I may not recover my money once it's a pre-loved bag and I wasn't satisfied with it. You know, or there was something wrong with it. But, you know, there were bags that I had used and got the experience from, decided it didn't work and I'd sold them. Bags that I didn't get at the store, that sort of thing. Like, none of these bags I sold immediately. Like, they were months and months down the line. Some of them were a year later. Some of them were six months later. That sort of thing. That was the reason. It was, And I think that that's a lesson that anyone can take from this was that if, if you're settling and it's not quite exactly what you wanted, chances are down the line, you're probably gonna wanna sell it. So you have to take that into consideration. Are you okay with the possibility you will wanna sell it? Um, are you okay to even sell your handbags? Do you mind the risks that are, are involved with selling handbags? Like you have to question yourself about these things. And all the other thing is, are you okay with it potentially being something that you're never totally satisfied if you don't like to sell your handbags? Um, can you afford to have 
items just sitting on the shelf being unused. Like these are the kinds of things that you have to question yourself when it is something that you're settling for. And for me, I'm personally okay if I have to sell my bags, if I have to lose money, I'm okay. You know, I've been, like I said, I've been buying and selling used handbags, my own ones that I've used and decided I didn't want anymore for the past 18 years. So it is no, it isn't, the system is no stranger to me. It doesn't bother me. So I can kind of feel more confident that if something's not going to work out, even though it's not great to always have to sell your stuff, you don't really want to, you want everything to work out. I'm also okay that if it doesn't, that I don't find it all too stressful. However, I have had some bad experiences with selling bags. Most of them great, just very few bad ones. Okay, so now we're now moving on to the whole iridescent bags. So I did buy a lot of iridescent bags in the past like year and a half and none of them I have anymore. And there is one big reason for it. So I'm going to list out the bags that I used to have. Oh, some of them I think, wow, why did you? But I know that and ultimately I've, I've done the best thing. So the Chanel Coco Handle in the mini size, the Iridescent Blue from 21K. I think they're all from 21K. The Chanel um, Iridescent... Oh, actually, you know what? This Ombre, the Ombre Mini Flap... I'm going to address that separately. I'm going to address it after, but it's still kind of in the iridescent category. It has some of the things that bothered me, um, that made me sell iridescent bags. Um, and then the other two was the Chanel Square Perfect Mini, the green and the pink. So the green I didn't buy from the store, but the pink and the cocoa handle I did. And I was using the cocoa handle. I the reason I actually sold that. So they all kind of had the same kind of reason that was from self-experience. The cocoa handle got really bad corner wear after two uses. Once I posted that picture, people said to me that Chanel doesn't spar iridescent bags. Um, actually, Chanel doesn't spar anything other than black classic flaps. <laughs> They'll only do repairs on things that are considered to be faulty. But something to do with like you using the bag and the color wearing away is not something that they consider to be a fault thing that they need to repair. I've got to use an, um, a third party repairer. And then I started to question, how would they go repairing an iridescent bag? Because they don't have the pearlescent pigments that Chanel is using. They have probably, they can probably do a metallic, but they won't be able to completely match the iridescence. So then that made, it made me go, okay, well that's something I did not know. I didn't know that Chanel doesn't spar their hair bags other than black bags. They don't spar them for general wear and tear or anything like that. I had no idea. So that was an eye, eye awakener. Um, some other people also told me that um, it's quite renowned that iridescent caviar bags do tend to show wear more so than iridescent calf skin bags. And I had those two perfect mini bags. So it's quite a given that obviously I sold the cocoa handle because I was like, well, this is pissing me off. It's got corner wear and Chanel's not going to spar it. That really bothers me. I'm not going to beat this up anymore and, you know, it get further damaged. So I decided to let it go and I lost money on that I, because it's the extra mini size as well. No one really wants the extra mini either, but I liked the extra mini. So I ended up losing money on that, unfortunately. Um, but the other two, the Square Perfect Mini. So one I got at the store, one I actually bought in the resale market for over the retail price, but it wasn't like a massive, massive premium or anything like that. Um, I decided that because of the fact that I found out that Chanel won't spar these bags if they get corner damage and people had told me and I seen for myself and knowing me, I'm clumsy, not deliberately careless with my bags because of my lifestyle, you know, two children. I mean, I'm babying them, looking after them. They're my priority, not my handbags. So if my handbags get dropped on the floor, they get skimmed up against things when I'm walking around, brushed against walls, scraped on cars, all these sorts of things. Like these are things that I cannot control um, because of my lifestyle. And I knew that these bags, I was like, why am I just gonna keep these just to use them for like special occasions? I have Hermes bags to use for special occasions. I have other bags um, that are gonna fare better that I can use for special occasions and also use normal circumstances. So I felt that because of that, it was better to let them go. And I knew that the bag was so hyped up that people were still like, it was, over the season, the season had well passed, but it was so super hyped that you were able to sell it for, um, to recover your money or sell it for a profit. So I made that decision that the best thing that was best for me was to not use the bag and not have it subject to wear and tear and was to let go of both of them. Do you have another, there was another two iridescent bags that I also got from that season. I'm going to talk about this one next because it was, it, 
I think I sold it not too long after I sold the square perfect minis. But yeah, that ombre unicorn uh, purple blue white mini flap was in silver hardware so that was again something that I kind of felt like mm, I don't know and I bought it at the time when I was having there was like it was FOMO they were about to do a price increase and I thought it was going to go up in price so I was like oh god you know I'm, I want to get it because it's really nice it's like a unicorn bag it's so pretty it's so unique I like unique things things that not everybody has the reason that I let go of that one was a couple of reasons one when I found out about the iridescent issue that they don't spa bags that was enough to terrify me and then the other reason was that because it was so so ombre and rainbow there was like three or four yeah three different colors or I suppose there's four because they blend into each other even though you could pair a bag like that with neutrals I felt like it was just too much of a pop like of, of color like it was I felt like it was a bit not me like it's a bit girly and I just wasn't able to integrate it like I just wasn't using it and I found out obviously about the iridescent thing that Chanel don't spar the iridescent and that was just enough to you know make me want to sell it so they all kind of had the same reason those iridescent bags but I do have one other iridescent bag that I only more recently sold and it was probably only like a few months back and it was the mini flap in the um, blue iridescent that one I actually got from the purse affair even knowing that Chanel doesn't spa iridescence and it's because it was in calfskin and I found calfskin super duper durable um, I felt like it was a durable handbag however again during the pandemic I just was not able to use it and um, I think even when we came out of lockdowns I still wasn't using it because I wasn't using the bag so unicornish girly iridescent -y. I just yeah I just wasn't going out in those kind of circumstances where I felt it was going to work with my outfits so I just really wasn't getting the use from that bag so that was ultimately why I decided to let it go so um, I don't know if that's kind of helpful for you. So I think that's pretty much self-explanatory. Most of my concern was to do with the iridescent wear and tear and because Chanel does not spa their handbags. One last handbag that I only very, very recently sold, like only like this month sort of thing. Um, like within, I don't know, two months, whatever, but very super duper duper recent. Um, and that is my white caviar top handle from 21 20s 21s can't remember but yeah i bought that from someone else um like a personal shopper um she was selling it for premium price so i paid over the retail but i still got it for a very good price and i did do a dedicated unboxing for it that bag my husband did actually buy for me as a birthday present i remember during the pandemic but i was the one that actually technically spoke to the person organized the shipment and that sort of thing because it was coming from europe so at the time that we bought the bag it was like over the retail it was for a premium because it was caviar but um because it was actually the first release of the mini top handle i think people were under the conception that oh chanel is going to just do mini top handles now and mini rectangulars with caviar like people are thinking that it was just going to be a reoccurring thing so even though in the beginning i paid over the retail price and i paid a premium i didn't pay too crazy of a premium because it wasn't too far off when the collection was released the market hadn't yet reached its peak because what then continued to happen was that seasons and seasons went by so the six seasons the six collections of Chanel every year so seasons went by and Chanel didn't bring back a caviar mini rectangular again and the price meant that these caviar top handles from 21s kept going up 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 and up and especially because it was during the pandemic most of the bags were still being kept new and undue and unused so I was seeing it going up and up and up and I was like I kind of just didn't pay any attention to it and I just thought oh wow that's a, well like I didn't pay that much for my bag thank goodness I didn't pay that kind of price for it then one day I decided I was going to just put it um like on a like a selling marketplace right um and I was just going to put it up pretty much just for the fun of it I was just thinking in my head you know what if someone pays a crazy price for this handbag I will put the money towards getting a um like another Hermes bag like a mini Kelly whatever that sort of thing all right um, cause the mini Kelly is like the most expensive Hermes bag you can get. And you can see that I've got one up there now, um, which kind of ties into that, I suppose in a way. Uh, so yeah, months went on and I think it was up for sale, like at a crazy price, like, but it was kind of, it was over the market price, but it was also in consideration for the consignment fees and stuff like that. 
and it was up for like a few months and I was not fussed to sell it. I really was like, you know what? I don't actually care to sell it. It's more like I just put it there just for the sake of it. Just because I was like, yeah, I'll just chuck it up there. And if someone's going to pay a crazy price for it, then I'll sell it. And that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> months went by, no one bought it. And then all of a sudden, I think three months, four months later from having it just sitting on the, like, you know, on this listing, someone just bought it at a, at a crazy price. Like they made me an offer for it, which was still very high. And yeah, I just was like, you know what? I, it's been up for months. No one else might offer me this again. It's an easy, easy sale because it was using like a middleman, like a middleman selling service. So it was all safe and secure. So I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll just accept it. And they may not even go ahead and pay. Like they might just not pay anyway. And the person ended up paying. Oh crap, so I'm actually selling it? Like I just, like I really hadn't like given it a lot of thought. And then I was like, oh, should I cancel the transaction? And um, then the person messaged me and they're like, oh, thank you so much for accepting my offer. I really wanted to get this bag because I actually used to own it before, but um, sadly um, I was robbed and all my bags were taken, but this was the bag that I really wanted to get back the most and I missed it the most. It had sentimental value because there were actually other people on this platform selling the bag for much more than what I had it listed for, like a lot more. Um, but to me, because I'd already paid a lower price point for it, I guess to me, it was still a lot of money. Yeah, I was seriously thinking, oh, maybe I should just cancel this sale because I'll probably never come across again a mini rectangular again for that price. Like I see what the market's like now, maybe I should just cancel it. But I guess fate be as it will that she contacted me to say like her story and that made me go, oh, okay, I can't cancel it now, can I? <laughs> like that would be pretty shitty of me <laughs> to cancel it when she clearly really wants this bag. I kind of regret it. Like it's one of those bags that I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah, it's a little bit of a regret, but I'm also, I'm also okay. Like, I mean, they're just handbags at the end of the end of the day. It's not that deep, you know, it's just a handbag. They serve the same kind of purpose, but yes, they're absolutely beautiful. And I do love handbags. They're like works of art for me, but at the end of the day, it's okay. When I've let something go and maybe I regret some of them, which I do, it's not like I lose sleep over it. It just makes me think in some instances when I look at my collection, like a bag to grab, I'm thinking, oh, I would have been nice if I had that bag still. It's pretty much only those instances that it kind of reminds me of like, you know, the bag that I sold and wish that I hadn't or whatever, that kind of thing. And obviously I will film a video of the bags I regret, regret selling. I will probably in some way exaggerate the title, you know, but really, just know that it's okay. <laughs> it's all right to have, you know, to regret selling a bag, but I also think that it's really not that big of a deal. But yeah, anyways, that is it. Uh, I digress. Um, stay tuned for part two, which will be uploaded eventually. Don't know when, but it'll be filmed and uploaded eventually. Um, and it'll be the Hermes bags that I sold. And then we'll do the last one, which is all the other bags that I sold and why. And yeah, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, then leave it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one.